<clears throat> well, howdy, y'all. I know we normally have the salutations to the kindred spirits, but I feel like the time I spent in Tennessee has made me a little more Southern than I usually am. Uh, greetings. Thank you all for joining me on this Wednesday afternoon. As if you didn't read the title, if you don't know why you're here, I've returned from the winter carnival of magic, doing a little lighting adjustment. Winter carnival of magic, which is held in Pigeon Forge. Let's adjust it. Let's go crazy with it because we can. Waka waka. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee this year, a couple of hundred magi gathered on a mountain. And uh, I'm going to share some of those experiences with you here today. I was uploading a video literally one minute before the stream started, ensuring that indeed I do need the clone, the clone I'm so sure that I needed. Let's say who, see who's here and say hello to Adonis. Hello, sir. How are you? Hope your busking adventures are coming along. Robert, good to see you as well. And uh, Tim Askin in the house. Look at the reg showing up. Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey. Hey, Magic Memories. Scott Link is in the house. Scott, where were you? Why weren't you on the mountain with the Magi? Gary Henderson. What's up, brother? I did have a big week. John, I got your message with the song. I didn't have time to listen to it yet. I'll listen to your song later. Harley's in the house. Hello, Harley. Good to see you. And let's get on with the stories. Hello, Jake. Jake and Nick are here, so I get to tell them this. Hey, guys, your shirts are ready. Finally, after months and months, I got. I can take this off now, I guess. When you go to the conventions, you get the badge. This was mine. That was the sketch. That's right. I've been wearing it since uh, last Sunday. <clears throat> Cat shirts. Eat. Wrong side. I'm, <laughs> I'm dyslexic in YouTube. Eat, sleep, magish. That's the hashtag. Eat, sleep, magish. That's uh, Harry Blackstone. This is St. John Bosco Jr., the third PhD, and of course, Cy the Cat. These are our mascots. Sometimes they're in here. They haven't been feeling well, so they're not in here today. All we need is a cat mess on the desk. If you have pre ordered a white shirt, chances are I mailed it this morning. If not, I'm going to mail them tomorrow. And uh, yeah, Harley's got one. His mom was kind, en kind enough to uh... wait. Really? Nick, you didn't get it? Now you get it. <clears throat> Harley got one. His mother was kind enough to support the cause. Uh, yeah, they're on conjure.com. That's the website. Is the link in the description? I don't know if I'm that professional or enough or not. Ah, oh, Stacy, hello. Good to see you as well. And Randall, greetings. Yeah, you know, I've been out of town. I had to do work. Sometimes I have to make bill money. You know what I did, though? I, pre I, pre I prepared, and I hope this, you know... I always worry about these things. Like, is this kind of endeavor too grandpa magic-y? You know, like, does anyone really want to see my slideshow presentation on the trips to the mountains of Tennessee? Well, guess what? You're gonna. I got, I got nothing better to do. <laughs> so this is Pigeon Forge. These are the mountains. And this is the strip of what I affectionately called Hillbilly Vegas. I called it Hillbilly Vegas, and someone on Facebook got mad at me, so I stopped calling it that. But I just called it that again, so I probably upset some people. I affectionately called it that after someone, uh, it sounded like a local called it that, someone from Tennessee. And as we uh, entered this uh, drive, Aaron and I, we drove up from New Orleans. Uh, a few sites, I took some pictures on the way in. This is Paula Dean's Lumberjack Theater. And as you see things like Hatfield McCoy's Dinner Feud Theater, you start to realize you're not in Kansas anymore. Here's the Titanic, because, you know, that's appropriate. This needs to be there. It's the Titanic, and this house is upside down. This is the Wonder Works. If uh, uh, I've been corrected. I've been corrected by Nick. Hillbilly Vegas is Branson, Missouri. Thank you, Nick. I, you know, I'm a noob on Hillbilly things. This, this is the attraction I would have gone to had I had 10 free minutes, but I was too busy in this building, the country tonight. Uh, I guess this is a big jamboree deal. There's 1,500 seats uh, in this facility. And uh, as I entered, you know what I want to do for you? Yeah. Let me show you what it's like to enter a magic 
this was right after I got my reg. I walked in right away and they handed me the registration. You know where we go? Dealer's room. Dealer's room vibes. Paul Richard, Paul was constantly doing his thing. Top gear demonstrator, great guy. There's a left hand set up, In the center of this area is a great jam session. They have close up pads for everyone. But basically, being in this room was like being in a big magic shop surrounded by hundreds of your uh, friends. Uh, let's see if this thing is working. I feel like something's about to happen here. Let's say hi to the latecomers. Gagada! Bonjour! Black Olive! Hi! What's up, Rabbi Yitz? How you doing? We're going to do a trick I bought from Trick Supply. Dude. I've been looking for one of these for years. I'm in, I'm in the, uh, I'm in the dealer's room two minutes, and I'm pulling out my wallet to give some money to Wolfgang Wallet. Sure, my wife was real happy, but sometimes when you're looking for things for years, you just have to do the thing. Does anyone know what this is? Does anyone know what these are? You get bonus points if you know. You can save the bonus points, and then you get a. Uh, you get the Koopy doll round. You can get the prizes. So we'll get to that later. This is the impossible penetration. I've toiled with what to call this thing, but here's the parts. It's a wooden blade. And then it's the wooden stockade. It could also be Pac-Man for prehistoric times. Maybe that's what these are. You know what I'm going to call these? X-ray specs for prehistoric times. This is when... Joke shops made their novelties out of out of the wood. I suppose it could be uh, if you worked for Oscar Meyer. Let's clarify. Only if you worked for Oscar Meyer could this be a hot dog slicer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Try to keep this situation family friendly. I guess it doesn't have to be a hot dog. You probably put other things in there. <laughs> Let's it's it's ideal if you put a spectator's finger on the inside, you hold their or they could hold the end, and then you do this. You go one, two, three days ago. I was doing this and I had a little mishap, and you do the jokes, and I'm not gonna extend this because I got a lot to get through today. Ultimately, hi -ya! you gotta do the karate chop sounds. You do that, and look at this. <gasps> What? The finger is inside. There's the stockades. Let me show you this up close. Let me show you this fine, detailed woodworking on this amazing prop. Folks, I finally acquired Clarence Miller's Impossible Penetration. Let me thank Wolfgang Wallet for doing what he does. He doesn't ask to be showcased on these things, but I dig his jam. Let me show you. Let me show you Wolfgang's site. I've done it before, but I kind of want to show you this. He has this space over here on tricksupply.com. Magic estates, collections, accumulations. He buys and sells used magic. And this is how he comes up with these crazy things that you might be looking for. So if you happen to be a, collection, a collector, there are hundreds of items and pages and pages. And this is tricksupply.com. He's a friend of the channel and just a great magic dealer in general. And those are hard to come by these days. Actually, that's not true. Most magic dealers are good. There's just not a lot of them to be found. So, uh, yeah, that's what I bought in the dealer's room. The wife was real happy to see me just start emptying the wallet right away. <clears throat> anyway, where was I? Let's go back to here. So we go in. We go into. I know, Mike, right? It scares me, too. Like, every time I do this, it freaks me out. I'm not even sure. And this is one that's hard to fi find. Go find one. I dare you. You know, you might find it for a couple hundred bucks on the eBay, but I don't know. Go poke around Wolf Wolfgang's site. So all the events were held on this 1,500-foot uh, seating theater stage. Wow, that's a big stage. We'll talk about that more later. Here's our first event. I, I wish I had time to put the names up. Let me say it clearly. Anthony Gerard, Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, presented a great lecture, mostly close-up. I wouldn't say it's totally skill-based, but sleight-of-hand focus, 
uh, Magic. I really enjoyed some of his handlings on the Hank Ping Chan. He had some wonderful card stuff. Great way to start the event, Anthony Gerard. Lecture two was David Ginn. David Ginn is a renowned children's performer. And I'll be blunt with you here. I kind of skipped this lecture. This is me coming right in on the end. I love kids. I, I love I love kids. I'm going to skip my kids' jokes. <clears throat> Y'all know I love kids. I got three grandchildren. I love four, four now. Grandchildren. Love dearly. Three daughters. Here's Dave again doing his thing. It was a swell lecture. Andy Gladwin. You know, Andy's lecture was great. What I love more than anything is that half of Andy's lecture is like a stand-up routine. Here he is reading Vanishing Inc. Uh, hate mail. <laughs> How he runs his company poorly. Uh, but now Andy's lecture is great. It's a mix of uh, card technique, a little intellectual magic. He's got a cool magic square and just a lot of good comedy. He does a great segment where he teaches five moves in five minutes. It's always a highlight. This is uh, Andy Gladwin. And uh, who followed Andy later that evening? Oh, it was me. Yours truly took the stage of this 1,500-seat theater to present an evening of close-up magic on the big screen. We had I was like 18 feet tall behind me. And then uh, I got just a minute of this. Like, I didn't film a lot of this stuff, but here's what this looked like. And uh, take note, this theater is going to look barren. There's like 200 registrants in this 1,500-seat theater. But hey, I think we all had fun. Of course, we're always moving the clean hand first. This is good magic sleight of hand practice in general. In other Just, words, when I have a dirty hand, if I'm about to steal this coin, this coin gets dropped off. Now this hand's clean, so I'm going to move this hand first, and then they take the dirty hand into the shadows. Good practice all the time. Any sleight of hand. Move the clean My wife hand on the first. camera, Aaron. And then lastly, boom. This was always like, moving. This was like for me. It's kind of like being on TikTok. I just pretended. I pretended I was here working for the camera. Uh, boy, talk about your alien environments. You're 20 feet back on a stage working for a camera in a 1500 seat theater with 200 people in it. It was weird, but I think we had a good time. Uh, I got some good feedback from the event. The lecture that I delivered is this one. I don't know if I mentioned these notes or not. This is my advice from a con man. And what this is, is kind of crib notes on a couple of PDFs. So you got trick talk and concrete and then some continued learning. We have uh, crib notes for the beef, which are the PDFs. And then at the end of this, there are some QR codes with video files. There's 10 videos and these are my lecture notes. I got like seven or eight of them I put up on my website, conjure.com. If you're interested, those are there. And I also have these back in stock for those of you that know the tricked traveler. I have people ask about when they're going to be back in stock. Well, they're in stock now at conjure.com. It's a couple of things I mentioned on, talked about in the lecture. <clears throat> Let me give a little bit of my attention to the chat, see if I'm missing anything before I go down the rabbit hole of what else happened. I've got a few video files and a couple more pictures for us to look at. And then I'm going to do a giveaway as we talk about this trick. Look what I got. The latest from Hanson Chen and Sam Huang, Crazy Sam's Mine. This thing is crazy. I'll do my best to do it for you all in just a few minutes. And then I'm going to give it away. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give this all away. So you'll get the notes. You'll get the Trick Traveler. You'll get the Crazy Sam's package. And one viewer today, as long as you live in the continental United States, or if you want to pay the postage, which will be about $24. You live outside the country, about anything I send is at least $24. I just can't do that right now as I will be traveling again to other magic conventions this week to go spend money at the dealer's rooms. <clears throat> so yeah, coming up, we'll do that soon. Where were we? Ah. Did, Tr did Trick Supply, I don't know that much about his business to know if he bought Hank Lee's stuff, but if he did, that's a good start to uh, to that. You were one of the main reasons you wanted to come to the convention. Well, that's good to hear. I should have charged more. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of kids, but there was a good core group of children. And I think um, 
the state of magic conventions in general finds us less and less children. There are some that embrace the youth, and we commend you, Magi Fest, Society of American Magicians. I'm sure there's a lot more that do it, but some of them are adult oriented, like, you know, uh, Here's a good example, and this is a great convention. Let me uh, let me point this one out just really quick. Coming up in April, the Gateway Close-Up Convention. I've been at this the last two years, and if I have, I'm probably not going to make it, to be honest, because I just can't. I'm so busy, and I'm doing two conventions this month, but maybe I'll get a wild up my butt and drive up to, this is right outside St. Louis, Missouri, the Gateway Close-Up Convention. I would say this is an adult-centric convention. This is uh, mostly adult card guys hanging around, having some drinks, talking card tricks. And boy, they got some great workers there this year with Dan Fleshman, Nick Lewin. He's so funny. Nick, uh, Steve Ellers, the Arizona card expert. Robert Moreland, rocking uh, Robert Moreland. I'm sure he'll be rocking it. Anthony Gerard, who we just saw, he does a great job. Ruben Stein, at least they got one coin guy there. And I'm sure you recognize John Bannon, so... This would be something on my radar that would be an adult-centric event, and uh, yeah. Anyway, we talked about that. <clears throat> Let me go back to Boink. See what else we're talking about. Oh, Adonis, you coming? Let me know when you're here. I think we might have talked about this. I might be in the Eureka Springs because I am going there next weekend. Let me put a little slide on this. If you happen to be going to, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Look where I'm going next week. The Cavalcade of Magic, Eureka Springs, up in uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Cavalcade of Magic. This is the Sketch. And this is the Deets. It's at the end of Ozarks. No, that's, that's the best Western. That's where it's at. Let me pause on this page if you need some information. I think this has what you need to know. You could also go to Facebook, look up Cavalcade of Magic, and if you want a chance to spend some time with me in a situation where there's not hundreds of magicians running around, that might be a good time to do it. And hey, Jimmy, look what I'm talking about. I will see you there next week. Bob Possible, hope to see you there as well. And if you live in the nearby areas, this is an inexpensive convention in a beautiful location. I'll be there just having a good time. This is me taking a deep breath and chilling out with my friends, and I hope to see some more friends in Arkansas. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. Looking forward to the R&R. &R. And you know you're my bro, so we'll have fun. So, yeah, this was me. I did the Friday night thing right after. Oh, yeah, Nick's coming. Nick is coming. See you, brother. Looking forward to seeing you in person. That's right. Nick's going to be there. Okay, cool. So we'll see you next week, Nick. Uh, the night wrapped up. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me get some unsolicited testimony about myself. <laughs> Doug, I just received my order from you today, and I'm beyond pleased. I also appreciate the free little trick stickers and note. I had to Google Lanyap. I get that a lot, a little something extra. Look, folks, we try to make you happy when you open a package from Conjure.com. Thank you for taking a moment to say the good word. So after I did my thing and, you know, we did the thing, it was uh, Stephen Bargazzi and friends. And I failed to get pictures of this event, but here I am with Nate's dad, Nathan Bargazzi's father, Stephen. That's right. Nate Bargazzi's dad. Uh, I met Stephen about 10 years ago at the Tricks convention, crying with laughter every time I see this man perform. To the right of him is Bob Sheets. My time with him at this convention was the most cherished of all. We had some wonderful conversations about street performing and buskers and just magic in general. And connecting with Bob was just emotional for me. So in lieu of pictures from the Stephen Bargazzi and friends, here's Doug Kahn and friends. Bargazzi and Sheets, great gentlemen. Let me say, if you're ever in the presence of these men, go watch what they're doing. We went to bed. We woke up. Here's the, where we started our day with a close up magic convention competition say the words right doug close up magic competition what about this 8 30 in the morning i was ready for this 8 30 in the morning close up magic convention a, a competition i didn't get there till nine but uh 
this was a good contest. There was a lot of good magic here. I came in on, uh, I think Russ Nowak was doing his ring and rope routine. Solid, good stuff. I wish I remembered everyone's name. I know Edmund Apperson took second place. The young man waving his hand. This is, this is Jamie Evans. For me, he had the trick of the convention. So everyone says, what's the trick of the convention? Let me show you. He did this in the contest, and I saw I saw Wes Barker do this on, uh, I guess he put it in the Instagram reel. I think it's in a stage show. It's Jamie's trick. I saw it a week before, and I was happy to see this trick. Uh, here is Steve Valentine watching. Uh, so he's, he, he's asking Steve, the volume's a little low here. He asked Steve to name any card. Name any card. Name any card. All right. All right. Oh, seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds, yeah. watch. The ace of spades, huh? All right, we'll try to do the seven of diamonds, make okay. it rise up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's here somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. We did it. It's in there somewhere. Play many card. Right. Play many card. Queen of hearts. No, the one I pre-showed you. No, the one I pre-showed you. <laughs> this kid is so funny. Jamie had me rolling in the aisles. I cried during his close-up presentation. Some of the jokes he had are just hilarious. Oh, so you name any card, he opens the box. The Ace of Spades rises out. Oh, it's a miss. And then, whee, the whole deck flies out of the box. What a great quickie. Jamie Evans. We're going to talk about Jamie and come back to him. Uh, as well. Yeah, this was the thought I had. And Jamie said, oh, yeah, I sell these. And he took one out of his bag. And Steve Valentine said, oh, I'll take it. <laughs> and he bought it right on the spot. I also had my wife there. We have to navigate these moments when the wife's nearby, when we're spending 50 bucks on a card trick. But maybe he'll bring this to the market. Although I kind of like it being something he sells out of his bag, because if everyone is doing this, trick then you know speaking of magicians that we saw in the boonies matthew mosley it was great to see you in pigeon forge as well matthew made the journey we we got to hang out for a bit in the uh at the convention and buddy it was great to see you as well let's see I'm losing my train of thought so yeah jamie evans here we are he's uh that's all the contestants good job fellas Hey, Nick DeFott, let me tell you, there was a couple of reasons I wanted to come to this convention. Two main ones, uh, Bob Sheets and Nick DeFott. And, you know, I got to see Nick later in the day, and I said, young man, I had high hopes for you, and uh, you did not fail to impress. His lecture was rock solid, the highlight, of, uh, uh, in my opinion, being to do the material that suits you. If you don't want to do that, Nick had a bunch of pieces of his that were just great. Uh, the highlights for me were this trick is color-changing handkerchief, version of half Tide Hank, and then a killer rope routine, killer diller, iller, iller, uh, Aldo Colombini thing he has buried. It's super good. Nick D. Fott. Oh, baby. Thank you for being there. Bob Sheets did a one-man show. Uh, I don't know. What do you do? An hour up there on this stage? Killed it the whole time. Bob is a top-notch worker, and how lucky was I when Bob said, does anybody here play poker? And I said, I do, and I don't think he knew it was me, but I ended up on stage with Bob Sheets doing this Malini card stab, an OMG. Bob Sheets doing the Malini card stab is nothing short of a bona fide miracle. I'm telling you what, <laughs> it's hard to describe. You just got to be there, and wow. Uh, I'll, that's like a core memory for me now. All right. After the one man show, Bob Sheets, we did Paul Richards lecture. And as shown earlier, Paul was a dealer in the dealer's hall. This was absolutely not dealer's lecture though. Paul delivered an hour of solid advice, mostly card centric, uh, highlights for me, the all backs routine that were, was super killer like maybe the best all backs, let's call it the all best all backs I've ever seen. Now Paul Richards has a Doug Conn quote. And uh, as mentioned earlier, it was just a joy to spend some time with this, uh, this veteran magician. He's been around as long as I have, and it's just nice to spend time with guys who've been in the trenches for 30 years. Where are we here? Where? What is this? Wow, let me tell you about this. 
I, I, uh, I skipped, I skipped ahead after the Friday night show. Oh, I, oh, we did the Friday night show. That's where we are. Okay. So after Paul Richards dinner and then Friday night show, I, I didn't take pictures or film in the Friday night show, except for the very end. Here's the very end. That's Andy Gladwin on the microphone. Eric Hughes has already been announced, and here comes a big pink bear. And finally, please give it up for Nick Defense. He's welcoming Nick Defense. The bear has been a running gag in this show. Nick! Derek is in the wagon wheel. Where is Nick Defense? Well. Dude, look at all the people in here. They about filled this joint. At least maybe halfway at the bottom part. There is Stephen Bargatze. So Stephen, Stephen, I don't know even. Thank you for coming this. to our old Truth be told, I just wanted to have this video of Nick D. Fott in a pink bear suit on the internet. I've accomplished my goal. I don't really need to do anything more than that. See y'all next. See y'all next time. That was the Friday night show. And then here's where we went. We went to an after party at uh, Steve Gronowski's house. This place blew my mind, which is where we were here. This, this is Steve's workshop. Steve is a man of some years who got his start in the slot machine industry. Imagine that back in the day. Steve has the ultimate man cave. Look at this. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about this. Look, five cents a dance. This is like an original jukebox. The music playing is would have been something you might have heard 70, 80 years ago. I don't even know when you started making slot machines, but when they were around, for example, when Al Capone was around, and I can say that because you'll see a bar in this scene. The bar came from Al Capone's bar. This house was built around Al Capone's bar. Look at this man cave. James James Cooper's there. James was just a winner for me this whole convention. Hey, who's that? Get it, Jeff. Get it. <laughs> Jeff. So I manly. Just pronounced Jeff's last name. Colwalk. Erudite magic. Don't know Jeff from Erudite magic. I was trying to find a poker game all night. No one seemed to want to play with me. I don't know. Here's the bar. Aaron's going to hate this part. Hey, hottie. Hey, Aaron. That's my wife. She hates being on camera. She hates it. Imagine having this basement. Sherman, SPA in the business. Thank you for your hospitality if you happen to see the show. Is this where the poker game is? Here's Steve. I didn't know that I was interrupting this conversation. And yeah, this, the, what a joy to be in the coolest man cave I've ever seen. Uh, that area would become overflowing with magicians, and they went on till 2 in the morning. I guess we bolted out of there somewhere around 1. I spent a lot of my time talking with Bob Sheets at this party. And uh, again, I've mentioned it before, what a joy it was to spend time with Bob Sheets. Yeah, so that's what that is. This is the uh, this is the workshop for this man who restores uh, antique, you know, uh, arcades, slot machines, etc. What a cool experience that was. Next day, we're on the next day. This would be the last day, I guess. We're on to Saturday. It was Thursday. We did that Friday. Here's... We're bringing it home, and then we'll talk about. We'll talk about. It. If you are joining us late, before I get to the last day, the last thing I'm going to do is talk about this, and then we're going to give it away. Maybe I can fire up the giveaway tool now. Let me get this started. You guys can start typing this in, bringing on the Streamyard giveaway tool. One live viewer is going to win a little prize package. We're going to match the text crazy. No, no caps. That's your word. If you live in the continental United States, or if you're willing to pay shipping, you will have the opportunity to win the latest from Hanson Chin. 
crazy Sam's mind. It's cool. It's cool. I like it. Con's palm. They're back in stock at conjure.com. And I'm going to send you my latest lecture notes, advice from a con man. Those are all on the website. Don't want to support the jam, you know, shopping on the website. You can do what Matthew does. You can just be a member. 17 months and counting. Thank you, Matthew Mosley. We appreciate you. All right. We'll let those comments accumulate as time goes on. And I'll get back to the Winter Carnival lineup. This is Jaffo. Saturday morning, Jaffo. Delivered, in my opinion, one of the best lectures of the event. He, he covered so many great topics and had some great magic. Here he is doing his zone zero routine with the pool, uh, the pool balls, the pool stick. It's a killer. And then he talked about the construction of the routine and uh, averting expectations of the spectators, which blew my mind. I love his, his theories on that. And his card work was great. He had some wonderful marketing for how to promote yourself as a professional and jaffa has got some great war stories about being in the trenches he's a fellow pitchman this guy's done tens of thousands of exhibitions if you get a chance to spend some time with jaffa he's an evil ge genius go be around him thanks again harley harley got on board as a freebie sticking around this is how we get him Occasionally, we'll give memberships away. Hopefully, I can do that again soon. I might be ready to do that in March, but no time to spare. I don't want to keep you all here too much longer. Oh, yeah, Matthew got the, Matthew got the, uh, stay focused, stay focused, Doug. You're going to be hard pressed to beat this number. Thank you, Jake. Jake supports the store too. If I get new stuff at conjure.com, this man is always there. Happy to support those endeavors. Anyway, go see Jaffo if you get the chance. And then Bob Sheets, bring in the heat. Bob freaking Sheets. There's a couple of highlights here that I want to talk about. Number one is Bob's work on the shell game. Here's what I got is three shell boot camp. I've used some of these techniques in the past. I'm happy to get this learn learning resource. His shell game work is the best. And then his work on the sax dice routine, the paddle move with two dice. I think Bob calls it rules of the game. Best work on this topic. Bob Sheets rocks. This is the three word review about Bob Sheets. The glasses got bent in shipping <laughs> in travel. All right, back to it. Back to it. Bob lectured. It was awesome. He rocked. And then, oh, we had an open mic contest. Here's Chaston Criswell. Hey, Chaston, I got your name right. Chaston Criswell. If you, if you call him Chastain, he gets mad. And here's Jamie Evans back for another stellar performance. A highlight for me, for sure, Chastain's egg bag. Jamie brought the heat. Cato Heller won, if I'm getting his name right. I mispicked the winners on this event. Here's everybody that competed. Cato Heller, Edmund Apperson took second. Jamie Evans took first and close up. There's uh, Tom Vorhan and... Uh, Ed Ripley's on stage. Great seeing you, Ed. I, I don't have everyone's name. You know, the convention did a great job of doing social media. You should follow them online if you want all the scoop. I told that to Tom. You guys did a great job with this. Here's Steve Valentine's opening graphic. You know what I did instead of watching Steve? Because I saw Steve at the Texas Association of Magicians uh, just a few months ago. And by the way, his lecture is one of the best I've seen in years. Uh, Steve Valentine, I took my wife to dinner and said, Steve, I love you. You know, I love you, Steve Valentine, but I had to feed the wife. I had to give her some romantic and uh, we went to the goat. It was good. If you go to Pigeon Forge, go to the goat. It's a good place to eat. Let me answer this question. Yes. After the stream, I will be on the discord hanging out until my dinner's ready. So it'll be an hour or two. I'll be on that discord. Harley, I hope to see you there. It's a member's perk. If you're a member on the YouTube uh, platform, you know, you come hang out on the Discord. I'm happy to see people there. Hope to see a couple guys I saw this weekend. Maybe Andrew McGrath will show up. Uh, I featured him in a short. Hopefully you all saw Andrew. I featured Brendan Herring in a short. Both of those guys were at the convention and sharing some great magic. 
the, this this was the closing scene of Steve Valentine opening the evening show. And as mentioned, I didn't film the evening shows, but I do have one more video I want to share with you. And I hope everyone here is still typing crazy or has typed crazy to win the missing link thing. Last video will be of the pizza party. This was the hangout after the Saturday night show. We all went back to the Ramada Inn, had a bunch of uh, horrible pizza from Little Caesars and did magic tricks. And, and uh, that's not the pizza party. That's my favorite trick from the convention. Is this the pizza party? Here we go. Hand first. Not either. There it is, buried. It was buried. I had so many things. So here's why. Here's why we go to magic conventions. You've all seen a lot of a lot of cool stuff and a lot of reasons to go to the mountains to sit with other magicians and, and learn from them and watch them perform. But this is why we do it right here. Fellowship, community, learning. Not politics. Got to talk to Jeff. We're going to have him on this stream sooner than later to talk about magic books and erudite magic. Jeff, this is your open room. Music politics. No, I'm just saying it. Go over there. It was reasonably early on. This thing went on till four in the morning. This might be about 10 o'clock. Okay. It is Luke Oliver. Yeah, all of a classic well, trick, but it's a great version. So let's yeah. see this thing. What's so this was Luke's first magic trick. So he, I thought it would be fun to showcase Luke. Now Luke runs a little. Uh, let me see if I can showcase Luke real quick. So we'll stop that. <clears throat> Now, I'll just say the wooden cardist on Instagram. He does deck reviews and such. This was Luke's first magic trick. So I don't think he's, I think this is the first magic trick he, he ever brought, bought. Normally does, uh, you know, cardistry. Here we go. This is a cool version of Hot Rod. So let's yeah, see this thing. What's really happening? Yeah. So here I have Holy some man. colors, wow. and I just need you to pick a number between one and six. So I'm going to go with three. Three. All right. So we're going to start from the bottom here. One, two, three. That leaves us with blue. So here, all I'm going to do is just give it a quick shake. And as you can see, everything's turned to blue, but I don't really like blue. I'm more of a red guy. So now I'm, all I'm going to do is just give it a little blow. And as you can see, completely red, both sides completely examinable. Completely examinable. Absolutely. So it's a hot rod that changes twice. Like I said, cool version of an old and then classic. Thanks for sharing that, Luke. Fully examinable version. Hold on. Y'all need to watch the beginning of this. I'm going to point it out. No, maybe not. Maybe not. There's Erin. She doesn't know I'm filming, obviously. Okay. Here's the moment right here. Jamie is giving my wife this bottle to hold. All right, here we go. Like this? Yeah. You want to keep it level? Yeah. Got this, Aaron. You got this. Ready? One. You got this. I don't think Aaron's ever flipped bottles. May I? Give me, let me give it a try. Nor have I. She did it. Nailed it. Is there not a bit here? You're not following oh, yeah. this up with some bit? Here's a gift for you. Uh, Bam! Yeah! <laughs> Nailed it! Chris I love that Jamie was able to steal my wife's watch. You know, it's it's Apple watches, maybe not the easiest thing to steal, but, but uh, more than that, stealing magicians' wives' things is extra challenging. All right, here's Chastin! Chastin! Criswell, traveling magician. He's got a card change that I think I have a good setup for. Let's look at this card change. Criswell, traveling hey, magician. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, happening? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Six of uh, six of clubs. There it is. Turns into the ten of hearts. Like I. I'll need to get the work on this, but here's what I can do. This is the part I don't like. Jamming it in there. Look, this part is okay, but I can improve this. Six of clubs. There it is. 
turns into the tin hearts. Yeah, this way. Give an open note to uh, Mr. Criswell. My double play production. I don't know if you're familiar with this thing, double play. It's uh, I've posted this on YouTube before. It's a face-up production of a double from the center of the deck. Make sure there's no goofy stuff on here. So I set with a pinky count to get a double ready, and then I do the winding. So I, I pretend to wind it up. And when you do double play, you end up with a card face up out jogged that is actually a double. Now, I don't know if that'll put you in the position you need to be in for this color change, but this kind of production of a face up double from the middle of the pack might be advantageous as opposed to picking up a double and then inserting it into the deck. So it could be a production that you miss. You say, um, is that your card, the six of spades? And they say no. And then whatever you did, because you fooled me, I don't know what you did, but whatever you do, you go, well, how about this one? And 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 now, now I'm having creative jam sessions, just like we did at the at the event, <laughs> which I would have thought of it here. We have a little more magic on this Okay, so yeah, this was, that was it. Is that all I had to look about? Yeah, all right. There we go. That's what you missed. A good freaking time. My understanding next year is the 50th anniversary. I can only imagine they're going to blow this thing off, uh, you know, even bigger than they did this year. And if you weren't there, you probably missed one of the best, best conventions of the year. That's your wrap up from the Winter Carnival of Magic. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. And if you haven't got the news yet, that if you type the word crazy, into the chat, then you can win this little prize package we're going to give away. Um, uh, why don't we take a quick look at this? This is, we'll go over here to Hanson Chin site. This is uh, crazy Sam. Boy, Sam Huang is like a, this guy's a machine for Have making you ever imagined wielding power. Cool magic tricks. Have you ever imagined wielding power like a modern wizard? This is the highlight. Now you can. Exploding, paper, exploding potato chip. Telekinesis, the power to manipulate, control, and interact with any object. So he's selling this as a from the mind of Sam Huang. A telekinesis. new chapter begins. Yeah. Can you know how I can search the card? I can touch things without touching it. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> so strange, right? But watch this. Something more amazing will happen. I'm gonna show something like with these glasses. Oh. <laughs> Sold out in black hole. <laughs> Not surprised. You know, what's this? Got some chips. You can take one. This is ten. the kill. It's count to three, you flip. One, two, three. <laughs> this is not a trick, but a powerful system that allows you to perform anytime and anywhere with borrowed everyday objects. But wait, it goes far beyond. Oh, that piece. I forgot that was possible. Like never before. I really like that. That? Okay. Well, we have to talk a little bit. Then. That's welcome to Crazy Sam's Mind. Well, there's the trailer. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Look what I bought, salt and vinegar. Like, I don't even feel like I should even give this thing a try after watching that Hollywood trailer. 
Yeesh. Um, okay, so I watched I watched the tutorial. You'll be able to do a lot of that, but all of that, probably not. Um, there's a lot of possibilities with this system. I'll tell you this. If you want to make it a if you want to make a potato chip explode, you're probably going to be really happy. Also, I really like this thing where you flick a card long distance. And I didn't really like this trick as much on the video, but when I started playing with this concept in my hands, making this flicking long distance was really cool. As far as animating objects in an explosive fashion, like the sunglasses or the pen where it shoots up into the air, these moments to me are not as, as appealing. What is this? You calling me out? And, uh, what, when Dixie had these on sale. So I'm going to get some chips out. <laughs> you can, you, you can imagine that maybe I'm doing this for your, uh, in, in your hand, but truth be told, I haven't practiced this enough to even try that. Nor have I probably even practiced this enough to be doing it on the internet. And at this point I'm thinking chips are going to fly all over my, let me get my snack tray for <laughs> Let me get my snack plate, and y'all can enjoy the background for just about 10 seconds. <clears throat> and in full disclosure, if you can hear me now, I'm just setting up the trick. Look what I brought. The Batman snack plate. So now, now when I make a mess, it won't be as messy. All right, so let's see. Finger gun, cocked, bang! Chip explodes. We did it. Live on the internet. I'm excited to do this. I've only practiced this thing about, about 10 times. So you can imagine if you practice this thing as you should, and certainly before you get on the internet, doing this about 100 times. And as cool as the trick is, Robert just likes the bat plate. Did that look like magic? I don't know. We'll review that in hindsight. But I think this is what we call proof in concept. And now all that's left is to give this package away. So if you have taken the time to type the word crazy into the chat, and if you haven't, you got just another minute to do that, you can win this crazy Sam's mind. Now, full disclosure, this thing has about... Uh, it has a bunch. I took a few out to demonstrate the trick. You won't be sad. That's your bonus prize, and you'll get my lecture notes as well. If you live outside of the United States, I will ask for shipping. I'm about to hit the draw button. I'd like to wish all the kindred spirits good luck. There they are, all the kindred. Love seeing all these names that really have become friends. David, fun videos. This will be a new, I think, new to me, winner of the prizes. Happy to send something to someone I haven't sent to before. David, what you're going to need to do is send me an email, connect with me. Um, how can you do that? Here's a good way. Conjure at conjure.com. Send me an email. Give me your YouTube screen name. Tell me what just happened. If you can do that as soon as you can, that would be ideal. And this is the vibe we like. Congrats. And we hope you enjoy. Jimmy. This is everyone's vibe. I mean, congrats. But everyone's really thinking that. But look, Jimmy, I'll see you next week. We can talk about this trick. Maybe I'll see some of some of other of y'alls at the Eureka Springs. Is it Eureka Springs? Arkansas? Calvacata Magic. I'll be there next Thursday. I'll be live next Wednesday, so I'll talk about this again next week, maybe. Always like to give the kindred spirits a minute or two if you have anything to say, questions, comments, constructive criticism. You know what? Here's something. If you've stuck around this far, if you're watching the end, you're probably a fan and maybe at least the cat fan. I'd like to give away one of these shirts. But you know where I want it to go? I want the, I want my shirt giveaway to go to a crazy cat person. So as I wrap this up, 
let me suggest that you leave a comment below on the video stream about a crazy cat person that you know that what you would think would enjoy the shirt. If you are that crazy cat person, okay, but you got to tell me why you are, and maybe you could get the shirt too. Hey, Captain Dave, it's great to see you. I used the picture you gave to me of Bob Sheets with the card stab. Thank you for sharing that. Next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, trying to be here every week. We'll be bright and early, bolting out to Eureka Springs next Thursday, so that'll be cool. Card flip. What card flip? Hold on. That's the wrong comment. With the uh, with the system? Maybe the next next stream. Give me, like, you know what? I, I got this in the mail from Hanson, and I'm giving this a thumbs up if we weren't clear. This is a good tool that I think, you know, it's a little pricey, like all Hanson Chin stuff, like, you want the you want the truth the true review here. It could be a little cheaper, like all magic, and maybe some of Hanson's stuff. I'd like to see that dialed down just a little bit. Um, of course, as long as he's selling out, <laughs> what's he care what I think? <laughs> I like I I like to provide the customer the ultimate value, and I think maybe if we spent like a little less budget on these overproduced. Uh, trailers and God bless you. I know it's a necessary evil, but then maybe if it was a little less money spent on that end, we could just little bit. Of course, Sam has to get paid too, and he's an evil genius, Sam Huang. So yeah, look, Hanson, y'all keep doing what you're doing. I'm a fan, and uh, you know, I appreciate you. Thanks for supporting the channel. Five. That's pretty good. Anyway, we'll be looking for comments after the video, and I'll be uh, handpicking a winner from those. Maybe we'll spin a wheel next week. I have to figure it out. I just want the shirt to go to a cat lover. That's all. And yeah, Robert already got a shirt. All right, y'all. That'll be a wrap on this. Uh, what is it? March thirteenth? Is it that? Yeah. Tomorrow is tomorrow St. Patrick's Day. Time flies when you're having fun. God's trying to get the plug in. Your policy is exactly price, sir. The price is right on the policy. Y'all picked up one of these yet from Scott Link? The Flexagon production portal. Scott, we got the plug in. Those are on the website too. Oh, it's Pi Day. That's right, Robert. Math nerd. I thought about doing a Pi Day video, but then I spent all day making a slideshow for this live. It was a fun time showing it to you. Nick loves his policy. You're welcome. Look, unsolicited testimonial. Recently performed for the teens. Went over well. Awesome. Thanks for your comment, Randall. All right, guys, I'm about to rotate my scenario. Go spend some time with the Discord members. I want to hear about this Jason LaDagne show. Stephon Barksdale was at. Hopefully he'll be there. And Harley, I'll see you in just a few minutes. I'm going to go make a cup of coffee and then turn on the Discord. It's going to be chow for now. And I am Outsty. Thanks for the hang.